right, here we go, part two. Okay, so this is the continuation of the review sheet for circles. We're going to start with number 21, which is on the right side of the page. Okay, so using the information, um, or find the information using the picture provided. So here's our picture, and we want to try and find uh, a couple different arcs and a couple different angles. Okay, so what's given to us first is arc AC is 110 degrees, and the angle... A or the angle BAC, I'm just going to call it angle A, is 48 degrees. We do know we we know a couple of things. First of all, um, the the circle all the way around it is 360 degrees. We also know that all three of these angles on the inside of a triangle have to add up to 180. But each one for the triangle and the circle, we only know one part. We're missing too much information. So we need to think about what 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 can we do to to try and think okay so if we look the the best way to do this is notice that each of these angles angles a b and c they're all on the circle the vertex is on the circle so we're calling these for example angle a is called a inscribed angle it's an inscribed angle we know that the inscribed angle is always half the intercepted arc okay so let's look at uh, angle A. Okay, so let's use a highlighter. Let's use let's use this pink again. Actually, let's use the green. Okay, so this angle, angle A. There we go. This angle, angle A, is 48 degrees. The intercepted arc, the one in between the angles. So this arc right here. This arc, which is arc BC, which happens to be number 21 is is going to be twice our angle because it's an inscribed angle or we can say that the angle is half the arc so what we can do is just say 48 times 2 multiply by 2 and you end up with 96 degrees so number 21 measure of angle BC or arc BC is 96 degrees okay if we know this is 96 degrees, we can then find the arc AB because the whole circle is, again, 360. So I'm going to erase this. Okay. So we know that if AC is 110, BC is 96, AB has to add up with the other two to be 360. So we can say 110 plus 96, which is 206. And we can subtract that from 360. So 360 minus 206, we end up with 154. So this arc AB is 154 degrees. Okay, and that is number 24, so 154. Then what we can do is using these two arcs, or actually these two arcs, a arc AB and AC, we can find the other two angles. Again, because angle B and angle C, they're both inscribed angles. So first let's look for angle B. So angle B is the inscribed angle, and I'm going to go ahead and try and highlight this. Let's use pink. So from A to B, this arc, or this chord, and this chord, they end up making up together. That was interesting. It kind of erased. Okay. And that makes up angle B. The intercepted arc is in between, which is the arc AC. And we know that the intercepted arc divided by 2 gives us the angle. So 110 divided by 2 is 55. So this angle is 55 degrees. And the third one, measure of angle C. Almost, there we go. Okay, so angle C, there's two ways to do this one. Again, you could say, well, AB would be the intercepted arc if C is the inscribed angle. So all I have to do is say 154 divided by 2 which will give you 77 degrees. Or what you could do is say, well, I know all three angles on the inside of a triangle have to add up to 180, so you could say 48 plus 55 subtracted from 180. Or we could uh, we could even 
add these up to make sure that these numbers are good. So 48 plus 55 plus 77, it needs to give me 180 degrees, and does it? Yes, it does. So yay, we got it right. Okay, so now we got these four answers, and all of these are inscribed angles dealing with the arcs. Okay, this one, it's pretty similar. Uh, it's a little bit different, but pretty similar. This time, it's now a four-sided figure on, that's inscribed on the inside and not a three-sided, the triangle. This is actually similar to the, the question on the left using numbers 15, 16, and 17 on the left side of the page. Okay, so we want to find angle A, arc B, and arc C. So how do we do this? First of all, I know if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, that means that opposite angles are supplementary to each other. So this one and this one, 68 and A, opposite angles have to add to 180. So 180 minus 68, we end up with 112. Okay, if I know this angle is 112, that means the intercepted arc, I'll try to highlight it, the intercepted arc, which would be this arc right here. Oh, that was kind of messed up. That's about the best I got. Okay, so this arc, this whole thing, all the way from this angle 71, whatever we wouldn't want to call this, including arc, or this angle B, this B, degrees and this 104 degrees. So all of this together is the intercepted arc for this 112. So we can say this 112 multiplied by 2 and get 224, which is the entire arc. I already know that this part is 104, so we got to subtract it out to find just B. So 224 minus 104. Those are terrible numbers. Let's try again. 224 minus 104. And we get 120 degrees. So B is 120, and I find C, this last one. Well, again, we know that this is 68 degrees. Okay, 68 degrees. Actually, I'm gonna, hmm, I'm gonna do it a different way. I'm gonna use this one right here, 71 degrees. Okay, so 71 degrees is our arc. I'm gonna erase all this. Kind of messed right there. Put that 112 back in. Okay, so the 71 degrees is our inscribed angle, meaning this arc right here, I'll go ahead and highlight it, is our intercepted arc. This arc right here is our intercepted arc because of this angle, 71 degrees. So that means that the arc is 71 times 2 because the inscribed angle is half the arc. So 71 times 2 is 142. And I'll write that in, how about green? 142. So to find just arc C right here, if I know this is 104, 142 minus 104, we find whatever's left over is 142 minus 104, 38 degrees. Awesome stuff. Okay, so let's write them over here just to keep them a little bit more organized. A, ooh, A is equal to 112 degrees, B is equal to 120 degrees, and C is equal to 38 degrees. Next problem, we want to find A, B, and C again. This one's a little bit easier, I think, mainly because this segment right here all the way across, I'll hi highlight that one, this one all the way across, is a diameter. How do we know it's a diameter? Because it goes from one side of the circle to the other, including it goes through the center of the circle. So it has to be a diameter. It's a cord that goes to the center. That's the definition of a diameter. So if it's a diameter, that means that this part of the circle is a semicircle, which is 180 degrees. This is 180 degrees. And this is 95 degrees. How do we find A? Well, A is found by the whole circle having to be 360. So we say 95 plus 180. Oh. Add those up and we get 
275 degrees. There it is. Okay, so we get 275. Oh, that's not the right. If we say 275 for these two added together to find A, we subtract it from 360. There we go. Back on track. Okay, so if you subtract those, you end up with 85 degrees, and that's what A is. There we go. Okay, 85 degrees. Okay, I'll even go ahead and write it down here. 85 degrees. To find B, we know that B is an inscribed angle. So we look at the intercepted arc, which is this 95 degrees, and all we have to do is divide by 2. So 95 divided by 2 is 47.5 degrees. So B is 47.5 degrees. And C. C is also an inscribed angle, except this one goes to this whole arc. This 180 degrees is the inscribed angle. So to find C, we just take the inscribed or the intercepted arc, 180 degrees, and divide by two to find the inscribed angle. 180 divided by two is 90. So C is equal to 90 degrees. Next question, number 27. This is an inscribed angle. The vertex is on the circle. To find this, we take the intercepted arc and divide it by two. So 116. Divide by 2, we end up with 58 degrees. Yay, so A is equal to 58. That was a nice and fun one. Number 28. Ah, uh, here we go. This is getting into slightly different. So, we've talked about two different angles so far. I'll even draw them. So, here's a circle. We talked about if it goes from the center or the vertex of an angle is at the center, this thing right here is a central angle. We also talked about an inscribed angle, which was number 27, the one we just did. Um, it could look who knows what. So where the vertex is on the circle, so where the vertex is on the circle or the vertex is at the center. These two are what we talked about before, central angle, which is equal to the arc and the inscribed angle inscribed angle which is half the arc. So these are slightly different. Let's delete that. So this one's slightly different. To find this angle that's outside the circle, outside the circle, all we have to do is find the two intercepted arcs, which in this case are both given to us. We subtract them and then divide it by two. Okay, so the first intercepted arc is 110 degrees. We subtract out the other intercepted arc, 30 degrees, 110 minus 30. Order does matter here. You need to say big minus small because we can't have a negative angle. Um, at least this can't be a negative angle. So 110 minus 30 gives us 80, 80 degrees. Then we divide that by 2 and you end up with 40 degrees. So y is equal to 40 degrees. Okay, that was pretty bad boxing. 40 degrees. Let's just underline it. Okay, and a little free symbol. Next one. Okay, again, this is on the outside of the circle. So to find the angle on the outside of the circle, you find the two intercepted arcs and divide them by two. In this case, it's a little bit different because we don't know both the arcs. So first is we need to find where they're intercepted. So it intersects right here one time, meaning this is a tangent line, and it intersects right here, one time, meaning it's in a tangent line. So this is 112 degrees, this arc is 112, or 120, excuse me. That means the other part has to be, well, what? They have to both add together to make 360, so we can just say 360 minus 120, and we get 240. So this angle, or this arc is 240. To find the angle on the outside, subtract the two intercepted arcs, 240 minus 120, which is 120, then divide this by 2. So 120 divided by 2 is 60 degrees. So x is equal to 60 degrees. This one, they intersect on the inside of the circle. So two lines intersect on the inside of the circle. This is some angle that's not at the center. The center it looks to be maybe about here. I mean, we don't really know where the center is, um, but we know that this is not at the center. So how do we find this angle? 
we find that angle, this one right here, this angle X, if they intersect on the inside of the circle, you add the two intercepted arcs and divide them by 2. So we say 90 plus 46, which is 136. And then divide that by 2. 136 divided by 2, we end up getting 68 degrees. Okay, so x is equal to 68 degrees. This one is a little interesting because now we have vertical angles on the inside here. So this one's 68, this one's also 68. We also have these two right next to each other, which make a straight angle or a straight line. They're called a linear pair. So we could find this one. I'll actually go ahead and do it just for fun. They have to add together to make 180. So 180 minus 68, and we end up getting 112. So this angle is 112. This one also is 112 because of vertical angles. But that wasn't part of the question. All we cared about was this x equals 68. Okay, this one again intersects on the outside of the circle. If they intersect on the outside of the circle, that means we subtract the two arcs and divide them by two. This case is a little different because we know the answer here. We know this is 70 degrees. Well, if it's 70 degrees, and I know this arc, i got to find this one, huh? Well, just like before, we subtract the two arcs. So what is subtracting the two arcs? Well, it's W minus 110. Well, I don't know what W is, so I can't subtract them. So that's fine. Leave it like that. We then divide it by 2, and that equals that outside angle, 70 degrees. So W minus 110, divide that by 2, is equal to 70 degrees. So to subtract the two arcs, divide by 2, it equals the outside angle. To solve this, this is just simple algebra. We can take this, divide by 2, and do the opposite. So we multiply by 2 on both sides. So we get W minus 110 is equal to 70 times 2, which is... 140, again we multiply by 2 on both sides, those cancel, 70 times 2 is 140. To do the opposite over here, we can add 110 to both sides, there we go, we get W on the left, these cancel, 140, plus 110 is, you guessed it, 250. So the W is 250 degrees. There is another way to do this, um, it's probably a lot easier way to do this. Um, but I first wanted to show you how to do it by the, the equation. This is what we really care about, the equation. Uh, this is what we're testing over. Um, but it is interesting to know that because this is a full circle, and we know this arc is 110 degrees, we can find the other, well, they both add up to 360. So we could say, the easier way is to say 360 minus 110, and get 250, and that's and that what we got. Yes, so this is a lot easier. Um, that's actually what we did a couple questions ago to find this arc. Um, but I wanted to use the outside angle to say the equation. Okay, so yes, the answer is 250 degrees. Next one, number 32. I think this is the last one on the front side. It's a multiple choice question. It says, what is the measure of arc EA in the circle at the right? EA. We're going to find this piece right here. Well, couple ways to do this. I'm going to do this the, the easy way, let's, or the easiest way, the, the shortest way. So the first thing is we know that EC is a diameter. How do we know that? Because it goes from one side of the circle to the other going through the center of the circle. So we know that this arc, EDC, would be 180 degrees. We know that EAC, this arc up here, is also 180 degrees. Now the easiest way to do this is if we know that this is 51 degrees, this angle right here, this is an inscribed angle, it's on the circle. So we can divide it, or multiply by 2, and we can find the intercepted arc. So I'm going to highlight that intercepted arc. Let's use green. This arc right here is the intercepted arc. I kind of drew all over the place. Let's erase some of it out. Okay, so this arc right here EAB is the intercepted arc. How do we know? Because this is the angle, and that arc is in between it, intercepted arc. Okay, so that arc is twice as big as the inscribed angle. So if the angle is 51 degrees, we can just multiply it by 2. 51 times 2 is 102. If AB is 72, to find EA, just subtract it out. So the whole thing, EB, 102, minus AB, 72, 
and we get 30 degrees, which is B. I'm going to color it in, but I don't know if you can see that very well, so I'm going to circle it. The answer is 30 degrees. Okay, if you flip over the page at the back, number 33, it says find the area of the shaded sector. We did one of these on part one of the review sheet, the left side of the page. So to find the area of the shaded sector, we say the degree measure divided by 360 multiplied by the area of the circle. So what is the degree measure of the sector? The degree measure of the sector is, the shaded part is 120. Let's use a different color. So 120 divided by 360 multiplied by the area of the circle. Area of the circle is pi r squared. The radius is 6. 6 squared is 36. We get 36 pi is our area. Ooh. 36 pi. 120 divided by 360 multiplied by 36 pi. I'm going to leave it in terms of pi. We end up getting 12 pi. This is the area of this shaded sector. All of this. Okay. The next question uses the same picture. It says find the length of arc ACB. So the arc A C, all the way under C, then up to B. So how do we find the arc length? The arc length formula is degree measure divided by 360 times circumference. The degree measure of the arc ACB. Well, I know that this measure is 120. I also know that the entire circle is 360. So we can say 360 minus 120, and we get 240 meaning that this is 240 degrees, this whole section. Okay, so that means this whole arc is 240 degrees. So 240 is our degree measure, divided by 360, multiplied by circumference this time. Circumference you can find by pi times diameter. The diameter in this case, if the radius is 6, that means the diameter is 12. So we get 12 times pi. So 240 divided by 360. Multiply that by 12 pi. Let's go ahead and leave in terms of pi. So just multiply by 12. We get, let's see, use a different color, 8 pi. Okay, and that would be the length of arc ACB, 8 pi. Number 35, find the length of the chord AB. Le length of this chord AB. Hmm, this is an interesting one. It requires a little bit of thinking. Okay, there's a couple ways we could do this. Okay, so we want to uh, find the length. So the easiest way, we just take, uh, I'm gonna, let's pick a couple, let's use black. I'm going to draw a segment right here. That makes a right angle. Uh, and why do I care about this? Because if it's a right angle, well, this is 6. This one's also 6 over here. Why are they the same? Because XB and XA, they're both radius. They're both they're, or radii, plural radius. They're both radii, so they're both equal or congruent to each other. So this is 6. We also split that angle 120 in half, meaning this is now 60 degrees, and this one is 60 degrees. And what do we see now? We see a right triangle with a 60-degree angle, Let's take a guess at what the other angle is going to be. You guessed it. 30 degrees. Yippee skippy. So now we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. What do we want to find? We want to find the length of AB. So what I can do first, I'm going to name this X. Remember, this one's also going to be X. They're the same length. They're both the same. Both these triangles are congruent to each other. So if we can find X, the length right here, then we can multiply by 2 to find the entire segment AB. So if we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, I'm going to draw up the little chart. If we remember, across from the 30 degree angle, this is x. Across from 60 is x squared, or 3. And across from 90 is 2x. Okay, so we know the 6, which is across from the 90 degree angle. This is 6. To find across from the 60 degree angle, the x. Um, actually, I'm going to rename these. I'll call it y so we don't get confused. Okay, so we have an x and a y now. Across the 90 degree angle is 6, and this is what 2x is. It says 2x is equal to, right? 2x is equal to 6. So how do you find x? You just divide by 2, and you get 3. 
So that means x, which is across from the 30, is 3. And I can write up here. That's this part right here. Okay, and that's kind of cluttered. Uh, but if x is 3, we can just plug it in for the 60 degree angle. So 3 goes in for x, so we get 3 square root of 3. So y right here, across from the 60 degree angle, is 3 square root of 3. Okay. This one's 3 squared of 3, that means this one is also 3 squared of 3, so we can multiply it by 2. 3 times 2 is 6, and we keep our square root of 3, so we end up getting 6 squared of 3. Next question, number 36, says, what length of chord AC would make it the same distance from the center? Um, this is trying to refer to the same distance from the center as the chord AB is from the center. So we want it the same distance. And last question, we found the distance to the center from AB to B3. So if we want chord CB, we also want it to be the exact same distance from the center. We want it also 3. What kind of length does CB have to be? If we remember, if the lengths of the chords, uh, or the lengths of the the distance from the chord to the center is the same. That means the two chords are also congruent to each other. And just like what we've said before, the last question we got AB to be 6 squared of 3. We need CB to also be 6 squared of 3 because if they're congruent, that means the distance between the chord and the center from each of them are also the same. So we want it the same congruent. So 6 squared of 3. And I think there's the last question for this picture. It says, what's the measure of, or what measure of arc BC would make chord BC congruent to chord AB? So let's go ahead and draw the chord BC again. Okay, there's the chord. If we want the chord CB to be congruent to, uh, or BC congruent to chord AB, what kind of measure does this arc have to be? So we want to find uh, this right here. I'm going to call it x. Actually, I'm not going to call it x. The center is x, so let's call it y. So what does arc measure y? y degrees. What does this have to be? If we remember, if the two arcs are congruent to each other, that means their arcs have to be congruent to each other. So if their arcs are congruent to each other, that means the chords are congruent to each other. So if I know what the arc AB is, it has to be congruent to the arc BC. So this one, if it's y, this one up here is also y. Let's try that again. y. And how do we find this arc right here? Well, we have the central angle is 120. We know the intercepted arc is always congruent to the inter or the central angle. So if central angle is 120, the arc is also 120 degrees. So it has to be 120. This is going to be 120. And this one's going to be 120. And that would mean that our arcs, or our segments, our chords, are congruent to each other. Okay, this is number 22. Got just a couple more. Find the area of the shaded sector. Kind of like what we did on the last, uh, the last picture, except this shaded sector is a little, uh, little interesting. Okay, there's a lot of it that's actually... Uh, that's shaded. So how do we find it? The easiest way, I think, is first to find the measure of the angle that's not shaded, and then we can use that to find the measure of the angle that is shaded. It already tells us that this one is a right angle. It's a little box here, which means 90 degrees. And the whole way around the circle is 360, so we can say 360 minus 90, and that gives us 270. Okay. So that's our degree measure, and if we remember, our equation is our degree measure divided by 360 times the area of the circle. Well, we just found the degree measure, 270. We divide it by 360, and we multiply it by the area, the area of the circle. So how do you find the area of the circle? The area of the circle is pi r squared. The radius is 8. 8 squared is 64, so we multiply by 64 pi. So 270 divided by 360 times 64, we get the answer of 48 pi. And this is, again, in terms of pi. That's the shaded sector. 
Now it says find the length of the arc. So length of arc BC is this one right here. Okay, I can go and highlight it. This arc right here. I know my highlighting skills are quite poor. Um, okay, so the length of the arc is degree measure. Divide by 360 times the circumference. The degree measure in this case, we already found it, was 90 degrees. So we say 90 divided by 360. Multiply by circumference. Circumference, oops, C, circumference is equal to 5 times diameter. If the radius is 8, that means the diameter is 16. Multiply by 2. So 16 times pi is 16 pi, which is our circumference. So 90 divided by 360, multiply that by 16, you end up with 4 pi. And this is the length of the arc BC. Just a couple more. This is number 40. Okay, number 40. This is a quite an interesting one. There is a there's a, an equation for this, and this is not dealing with the angles anymore. This is actually dealing with the side or the the lengths of these chords. Okay, so remember, if they intersect on the inside of the circle, these two chords intersect on the inside of the circle, we can write the equation. It looks like a times b is equal to c times d. Well, what does that mean? Basically, all this means is we multiply the two pieces of the chord together. So this one is x times eight. I'll go ahead and write it out. X times eight is equal to four times ten. Okay. Well, what is x times eight? X times eight, or eight times x is eight x, and four times ten is forty. How do we solve for x? Divide by eight on both sides, and we get forty divided by eight, which is five. And that was a pretty bad circle. Okay, we'll leave it like that. And the last question, number 41. Okay, this is kind of the same as the last one. Just like, just like this one, it's two chords intersecting each other, or two segments on the inside of a circle, or two segments on a circle that intersect together. This one, number 40, they intersect on the inside of the circle. Number 41, they intersect on the outside of the circle. So how do we do this? Okay, um, I can't remember exactly what letters we used, but we said add the two parts of the segment together, then you multiply the entire length of that segment by the outside number, add these two together, and out multiply by the outside number. So I'm just going to write it down. So we say add the two together. I'm going to do the top one first. 11 plus 4, add them together, multiply it by the outside, 4. That's equal to add these two together, x plus 3. And multiply this by the outside number, 3. 11 plus 4 is 15. 15 times 4 gives us 60. I'm going to go and write 15 up here. And 15 times 4 is 60. x plus 3 times 3. Well, we can't add these together, but we can distribute this 3. So 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 3 is 9. This is uh, an easier equation to solve now. We can just subtract by 9 on both sides. 60 minus 9 is 51. Is equal to 3x. To solve for x, all you have to do is divide 51 divided by 3 to get rid of the 3. Cancel out this 3. So 51 divided by 3 is 17. So x is 17. And that's it for the review sheet for circles. This is part 2. If you missed part 1, go ahead and look for the other video for part 1. And good luck.